Good day, I'm Blue Suit, and today we're reviewing a brand new action hack and slash roguelite called Warlander. In Warlander, you play as Bruce, a resurrected member of a forest tribe recently slaughtered by the invading techno forces of the new god, Morvan the Immortal. So, you make a pact with a recently usurped old god to destroy Morvan and enact your sweet, succulent lightsaber fuel vengeance. At first, the story in Warlander seems shoddy. A cobbled together afterthought from a development team who lacks the resources to invest in something worth paying attention to. But after the first hour or so, I found myself curious about the little shards of dialogue sprinkled about the game. There's a surprising amount of content between the bestiary codex entries and the memories that you pick up. Don't expect a Dragon Age amount of lore here, but it gave me a warm fuzzy that Clock Drive Games was committed enough to the world they built to flesh out some juicy tidbits for those who went looking. The biggest part of Warlander is the fast-paced, stamina-managing style combat. As a veteran Dark Souls player, I thought I was more than ready for what it could throw at me, but this is not a Souls game. It's immediately apparent. There's no lock-on feature in Warlander, despite what the options say, and the combat felt downright unwieldy. I found myself fighting with the camera almost as much as I was fighting with my enemies. It wasn't until after a death or two that I realized that I was actually meant to aim my attacks, almost like a melee third-person shooter. The difference between Warlander and other hack and slashers is that aiming at different body parts actually has a strategic purpose. Cutting off the legs, arms, or head might not kill an enemy outright, but will certainly cripple it depending on the enemy and the affected appendage. The skills in the game are just as great as the core sword gameplay. Every single skill in the tree is incredibly satisfying, especially once ranked up. I often found myself reading the skill text and thinking, this sounds like a trash skill, I'm not going to use it only to end up trying it much later and loving it. And I loved every single skill in Warlander. My personal favorite was shield bashing someone out of their armor and then having free reign to dismantle their limbs as I saw fit. And the skills were all quite balanced in their own way. If a skill was overtuned, it was usually only so against certain enemy types. One major improvement I would want to see here is the ability to see the skill tree at any time. The skill upgrades can often have very specific requirements for upgrade. It would be nice to see those requirements so you know what body parts you need to be lopping off in combat. Currently you can only see it while at an upgrade station. All in all, pretty amazing little game, right? Let's talk about some of the rough edges in Warlander. The first thing that everyone noticed was the graphics. And I have to admit they're pretty uninspired. Most of the game looks like Fable 1 Remastered and the animations, as well as the voice acting and soundtrack for that matter, pretty much follow suit. I'd be fine as long as they got the job done, but they often didn't. On a few occasions I had to reset the game because an enemy had glitched through the wall, or Bruce couldn't get out of a hole that he fell in, or the skill tree was bugged and couldn't be upgraded. Not exactly game breaking though, when you reset you just have to repeat whatever level you were on. The bosses, aka the Techno Champions. One of the most exciting things about the hack and slash genre is taking down big, intimidating bosses that you never thought you could defeat. In Warlander, however, instead of huge hurdles to overcome, the six different bosses in the game are actually much easier than most of the normal waves of enemies that you're gonna have to fight. Each boss only has about three to five moves that you need to learn, and these moves are easily telegraphed and based on your distance to the boss. So if you're close to a boss the entire fight, you're probably only going to see two different moves come out. Beating a boss in Warlander does allow you to permanently unlock a base skill, so once you beat a boss once, there's little reason to fight them again beyond experience points. That being said, even though most of them are quite easy, it does provide a nice break from the wave style battles of the normal techno forces. But moving on to the game Ruiner. It pains me to say, but the controls are terrible in Warlander. For whatever reason, the game was designed to be pri played primarily using mouse and keyboard, which I found unintuitive. Clock Drive Games has already patched in controller support at the time of this review, 
but I found a controller to be basically unusable because of how bad it's implemented in every menu. It was a constant struggle to avoid enemy attacks. Not because they required precise timing, but because Bruce's movement speed would randomly slow to a crawl, as if he just hit a patch of quicksand. Bruce's stamina, however, would continue to drain, drying up whatever chance you had at a last ditch emergency roll from danger. This happens every time the main character changes direction or tries to move diagonally. If I would have died due to this bugged control system an hour or two into a run, I would have quit and had very little interest in ever playing again. Warlander would find itself amongst so many other games in my Steam library, never to be touched again. In a genre that relies so heavily on having tight animations and fluid combat, Warlander completely misses the mark. Every aspect of fun in the game is diminished every time your character makes a move outside of your input, and this happens constantly. In the game's current state, I really can't recommend it to anyone. I wanted to like this game and still had so much of the experience taken from me by these bugs. As it is right now, I would only get this game if it were deeply on sale, so I'm putting its value around six to seven bucks as I could only really put less than 10 hours into it before I was just done and over with it. However, the ongoing controller support issue is a major part of Warlander's lack of value. If they were able to fix the movement issues, make a controller viable, and give players a tight, fluid combat experience, Warlander would easily be worth 25 bucks, almost double the full retail price. And I would say that it would be a must buy for people at all interested in this Beat Saber meets Dark Souls style combat system. Warlander is really a great gem underneath all these negatives, and time will tell if Clock Drive Games is able to polish it into what it should have been at launch. I hope you enjoyed this review of Warlander. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what you thought about it. Until next time, peace!